Hi everyone. Hi everyone. <laughs> it's great to see you all. I'm Peter. For those just joining in. <laughs> <laughs> Feels good to be here. This is the first time Peter and I actually do a session together for the online retreat. So it feels actually really beautiful, like a way for us to extend. So really happy to be here. And yeah, most of your faces I'm kind of familiar with, but there's some new faces too. And so welcome everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, this theme, let's say this My Spirit Given Function theme, has been something that really just came in as a, a big inspiration for us. Uh, in fact, you know, there's a group of us who kind of pray together every month um, about the theme. We have a, what we call an extension team, and uh, it's where we just get together, a few of us in the community, and see what feels really inspiring in the mind and um, what feels like it lights us up. And uh, when we had, when we started talking about this, the theme of function, I think many times, you know, it, for us um, on the extension team in particular, we feel like it really lights us up because we know our function is happiness and, uh, and we're never happier than when we're extending. And, um, and so we, we thought, oh, yeah, that's a, a great reminder that we could have for ourselves through the month. It's just how can I stay consistently ha happy? And it is just by being in that prayer of the spirit of like, what would you have me do? What would you have me think? <laughs> yeah, I feel like these themes are always um, like there's something in it for us, like for us as a community, for us as a team. And then, of course, for everybody who's here as well and everybody who's listening in but it always feels like there's something underneath it that needs to be clarified in my mind around the theme that we're discussing the whole weekend and i remember when we started praying about this particular theme i really felt this theme but there was also a thought of the theme um i need do nothing so we were kind of oh i need do nothing that's beautiful and i, I remember i expressed with the team was it I'm not ready for that. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, my mind is like, I feel like so, um, like a lot of act activation, like there's a lot of activities that we have in the community. And I could relate initially more to my spirit given function. So, oh, I can actually relate more to that than I need do nothing. Although I need do nothing has nothing to do with you're not doing anything, but it's about basically what i feel right now is like it all comes down to the same theme actually so it didn't really matter whether we would have called this i need do nothing or my spirit given function but it only kind of came through for me um last wednesday we had a yeah our extension team call and we were just sharing about yeah okay we're gonna take this session and just be in prayer what is it for us this theme and and I remember I just bursted into tears because I realized how much healing there's actually underneath this theme for me still. Um, like from going from the doer concept to like being done through to feeling complete bliss. <laughs> um, so I feel like this is a very practical, very practical theme um, for all of us, I feel. Uh, and, and David, I think he touched upon it at the Holy Instant online retreat, our last online retreat, because that's where David and Francis talked about, yeah, the Holy Instant, but how do you get there? It's like you go from a doer being done through and completely being washed away from that doing concept. And then it's like you're, you're ready for the Holy Instant, <laughs> but there's a lot of undoing. Um, in that process that's what i can say for myself 
<laughs> there's a lot of undoing and a lot of being used by the spirit every day in in all sorts of ways <laughs> mm. yeah yeah i think that's beautiful yeah because i felt the same way when we were touching upon the theme of i need do nothing it kind of felt like okay i'm not sure if i'm ready to speak about that in some kind of whole way my mind wasn't quite ready and then but then when this kind of theme kind of came in i know we had a feeling that we could relate to it more because we we've been so familiar with the different ways the spirit has used us um but yeah somehow they're, they're kind of like they're merged more into the same thing now and um it's been kind of an interesting week too because you know we had like covid symptoms and things happening in the house uh, starting like a week back and some of this has kind of caused us to go very quiet and uh, be very still and and so it's been like an opportunity to actually go from the, the busyness into like okay now I'm just being given this opportunity just to do nothing with the body it seems like and can my mind find the same peace in just you know accepting my, my, my spirit given function is actually healing and it's not really about what the body is doing, but how my, where is my mind aligned? You know, what am I aligned in the spirit's guidance in the moment, which can be for me just to be totally still for a while, or it can look like I'm moving. So. <laughs> yeah, we were also talking before the session a little bit about um, like seeming steps that we've taken on our journey. Because, um, yeah, when Francis was sharing today and every time David shares the word joy, like in my mind, like it just resonates inside like joy. It's like, yes, there's something inside that just kind of it just it starts to ignite something and I can relate like, yes, joy, that's what I want. And yeah, thinking back of like, I think I've been here now for four years. You've been 10 plus years, <laughs> I mean, 10 plus years, four years <clears throat> in community. But, but I remember that before that, it was like, I remember that calling, like there was always this question of, but there has to be a way to be happy. I feel like that's where the whole journey kind of started. Like just seeing around me, I was in my late twenties, I think when the course came to me and it was kind of in the time with, you know, we made career or my friends wanted a career or wanted to have kids, like all kind of in that phase. But I could see like, it's not, I don't know. I felt like a lot of ambition and a lot of trying and a lot of future thoughts and thinking about your pension. We were 28, they were calculating what you're going to have for pension. I'm like, I don't, I can't, I can't live like this guys. <laughs> I just thought it's just too it was too abstract actually for me like I, I I can't I can't live like that for 35 years for some kind of future something that might be there but I'm not sure there's no guarantee whatsoever that it will be there and I don't know like it just felt like the steps that we've taken from that moment on of like yeah I want happiness now what okay the course is coming to my life okay wow <laughs> this is deep Okay, how do I do this? Okay, David Hoffmeister shows up on YouTube. Okay, Living Miracles Community shows up on YouTube. Okay, I can listen to those who have taken these steps. And yeah, I don't know, it just we were just kind of talking about the steps that kind of came in for us, like just with the prayer of like, okay, spirit, I want something new. I want something alive. I want something happy, like truly happy and <clears throat> really living in the moment. Like if you're telling, this is your promise to me, now show me how, how do I do that? And yeah, we were talking a little bit, like we both had, before we came to community, were some steps with like jobs that were so given. Like I was in, um, actually when I graduated, I graduated in a time that the whole market went flat. There were like no jobs for me. There was like, that was like, I thought it was like a blessing in disguise really, because I was about to go into career mode and I couldn't seemingly, there weren't a lot of jobs. So I went into kindergarten 
um, which I thought was like a temporary sweet little job. And I stayed there for five years <laughs> and it completely blew open my heart, like working with kids, with babies, with toddlers. Uh, that was like a constant reminder of living in the present, like that's all they do. <laughs> so I feel like the spirit, and that was actually before A Course in Miracles, the spirit used that as like for five years, that was my mind training program, <laughs> working with kids and my colleagues and practicing forgiveness and practicing gentleness and being very present with them. Um, they were like my greatest teachers. I'm so grateful <laughs> for all of them. and. And then I feel like after like five years, I think at some point, maybe the course was already came to me. I'm, I don't remember, but I it was like, I'm ready for a next step. And and I think it was just I wasn't familiar with praying because I'm I, I didn't grow up religiously. We didn't pray. I, I did, but not really in that. I wasn't used to it to pray like, OK, spirit, what would you have me do? But I think I prayed and then had yeah, this other job opportunity just kind of showed up and initially it was a, a different like kind of kindergarten setting like a different um, philosophy it was very open-minded actually um and it only had like a few hours on contract so I, on paper it looked terrible it was like the ego's like oh no 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 you can't make enough money you can never leave your parents house if you're gonna take this step like it was, it looked terrible, but in my heart, I felt I have to go, I have to take this leap. And I did. And I think it, maybe it was two weeks and I got like a full-time contract within two weeks, which wasn't there at the time I took this step. So it was like the spirit was just using these symbols. And, and it happened a couple of times, actually, I was there for like a year and a half. And then I felt again, like, okay, I'm, something there's something calling me there's some expansion i feel called into and then this other job came through which was kind of my dream job at the time with horses and kids and it was like my fantasy job and i was then really practicing the course and again it looked terrible i had i don't think even i had any hours on paper but i felt i have to do this this feels most expansive for me right now for my mind and and i did i took the leap and again within a month i had like 32 hours on contract i could like you know i could actually leave the house like i could do things that i wanted to do i could continue joining online retreats like you know i had the funds to do things that i i felt i needed to do for for me and yeah it just it just feels like the spirit has always been like so gracious like but it, it wasn't always obvious to me um when the step would be right in front of my nose i could feel it i could feel like yes but it doesn't look <laughs> maybe the way i think it should look like with the security or safety of the world um but it it worked out like every time it just worked out and even all the way through right before i came to utah in 20 18 my last job I I had like a nine I, I needed something temporary which was like nine months and I had the exact amount I needed for going to Utah and and a little bit of extra and it just all felt like like a perfect like a perfect fit like I can't even describe it differently like it just felt so perfect and I feel especially now looking back I see even more synchronicities and things of like wow that was already laid out like the path was already laid out i didn't know <laughs> but yeah it was kind of just being shown to me in every moment and and i feel like it was all it's all for happiness like it was all to expand my mind out of this small town girl <laughs> concept i had about myself so yeah i just feel like the spirit just uses absolutely everything so yeah a little bit of a backstory <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think like <clears throat> david and francis did francis did mention how you know spirit can use the the skills that you know we've developed along the way <clears throat> <laughs> <Excuse me. Thank you. laughs> 
Yeah, when I um, started out, I mean, I, I've mentioned it once a couple of times before, but I had this real draw to creativity and art, like the creative process uh, when I was growing up and I was young. It seemed to be the only thing I was good at. Um, you know, I was this tall kid back in high school, but I was no good at sport and had no desire to be good at sport. And uh, my dad would try to encourage me in different directions and try to be competitive, but I just couldn't do it. And, um, but I, you know, did have my creative ability, which I felt like I, I valued. But even that, I kind of felt like my art and everything after high school, and even in starting high school, I felt like my mind was starting to un unwind from the world and starting to feel disillusioned about what's this whole thing about? <laughs> and, and just the idea of having to make a living and, you know, earn my worth. And, and it started to feel so heavy. And I kind of felt like I couldn't even paint or draw anymore because I just started to feel like, what is it for? I didn't know the purpose. So I, I really started to lose it at that stage. And that's when, you know, the course started to come in. I was trained, I did a graphic design course, but I couldn't, I didn't have it in me to pursue a career after doing the course. So I said, okay, spirit, I have this degree, this diploma, what am I going to do with this? And then, and then for a while, it seemed like I, I didn't have a job for a while. And I was just praying. And then I think I did get into the course and started to kind of like, started to get a feeling of like, okay, I really do want to follow whatever the spark is in my heart. I don't know about making a life for myself, but I want to try whatever way is given. So I kind of just started to practice. I, I said, okay, spirit, if, if there's anything, you know, you'd have me do uh, that, you know, would light me up and feel expansive and fun what what would it be and this uh this store came to my mind called australian geographic which was like a, a it was like a kid's store and they also sold australian kind of merchandise didgeridoos and <laughs> this kind of funny stuff uh, boomerangs and so um and i just remembered going into this store when i was younger and i always felt so lit up because of the energy of the people working there and there was such a joy so i said okay that feels like it's sparking me in the moment i'm gonna go towards that so i kind of wrote a resume and i went into the shop and uh you know, the, the person that I showed my resume to the person at the counter said, look, I'd like to apply that. They said, oh, sorry, we, we have no jobs at the moment. And um, I was like, oh, OK. Uh, they said, if, if you really like, you can leave it with us. But, you know, there's nothing kind of going. I said, OK. And then like a week later, then they I got a call from them out of the blue. And then there's, they said, yeah, please come for the job interview. And, you know, sure enough, it was kind of given. And I made so many great uh, friends in that job and had so many great collaborations that it felt like it was a big spark in my heart. It's like, wow, that really worked, you know, just actually letting the, the joy lead the way. And then, okay, suddenly this was given. And so I, I was then in that job for a while. And then suddenly that started to feel like it kind of started to die down and it, the, the same motive wasn't there anymore, like that same joy. And so again, I went into prayer. <laughs> I was like, okay, spirit, what is this time? Is there anything that I still feel like would really light me up? Please show me. And then I kind of remembered this art gallery, like this uh, art gallery of New South Wales. It was uh, a place I always kind of loved and it was surrounded by these big botanic gardens um, right near the opera house in the Harbour Bridge <laughs> and um, and I, I kind of felt like if I could work anywhere I'd want to work there and be around surrounded by this massive park and everything and and so I have, I have no idea I have no qualifications actually with anything of an art gallery and then I looked online and this job appeared <laughs> to work in the art gallery shop and I was like Oh, okay. Uh, well, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> so I applied for this thing. And when I went into the job interview, I actually found out it was for 
seasonal work, working in the little shop that they had at the end of an exhibition. And they had this exhibition coming up for Monet. Um, and I always loved Monet. And so, you know, I, they said, yeah, if you, for this role, you'd get to work in the little shop at the end and it would be, you know, throughout the season. So I, I you know, applied for that and sure enough, I got that job and it was apparently there was more than 500 guys who tried out for it and I was the only guy who got it. So something was just kind of dropped in and it was kind of given. And that was totally uplifting too. And then I, at that time, I was going deeper with the course and I also, um, David had come to Australia and uh, I met him at a, at a retreat and my heart was lighting up more and more. And it started kind of shifting from what could I do for a job to what can I do that can really align my heart with the teachings of the course where I can practice it in a deeper way. And I had uh, David show up um, and at the time he had what, what was called the messengers of peace. They're the ones who were joined with David uh, teaching with him and Lisa and Helena and uh, Jenny, a big group of them came out to Australia. Mm -hmm. And so I went to this retreat and I couldn't believe that they were saying all they did was teach this all the time and travel from place to place, wherever the calling was. And that's all that they were doing. And the spirit was providing them to, to live that way and to extend that way. It felt so inspiring to me. But at the time too, you know, I wasn't ready to totally go with them and follow. And so there actually was a time I, I was still getting this seasonal work at the art gallery and I had my course in miracles book. And so I took it step by step. One of the, one of the first steps was um, actually I met uh, Frances Sue in Australia at a course in miracles group that she started there. Um, and we started that group and I was there for the very first group she organized and we did that together for two years. And I met uh, Mighty Companions through that too. Uh, Ross, who was a uh, Mighty Companion who I ended up living with. So after I met David and I heard about no private thoughts and no people pleasing this way of living together and just being very authentic and, you know, just practicing being very honest. I had the feeling, well, I really want to practice that in a deeper way. And that's when Ross said, well, why don't you move in with me? I was living with my parents at the time and I, they weren't very open to hearing about my deepening in the course. And then Ross said, well, why don't you move in with me? And so, yeah, we lived together for more than a year and we practiced uh, no private thoughts and no people pleasing together in this house. And we went deeper together. And then when I did go to work in the day, I used that as a backdrop to practice the course too. So I went into my little gallery store and I went behind the counter and I had my lesson for the day. And I would just be repeating it like a mantra to myself all through the day. And anybody who approached the counter, they became my, my subject <laughs> who I was going to practice my lesson with. And it was really so much fun um, because I remembered sometimes I even had these figures who would come and be disappointed with something uh, in the store and they would start yelling at all the employees in the store and all the, all these employees around me, they were kind of like looking very concerned and trying to say the right thing. And I was just smiling and kind of like smiling happily at the person who was kind of complaining and they couldn't even direct their anger at me because it was just bouncing off. <laughs> so they became these really rich experiences for me to practice the course and go deeper. Yeah.